It was a very, uh, very large case uh, in terms of interest. Uh, it's the only time in my career that I've brought chairs into the courtroom for the for the uh, people who were watching. Um, but it, it was in the news every day. Uh, it had been uh, very newsworthy for several months leading up to it. And uh, so, yes, it was a large case, big case. Would you have described the first trial as a fair trial for Daniel Wade Moore? It depends on when I describe it. During the process, I thought it was absolutely. Uh, after things were discovered later on, uh, it was not. It was clearly not. Um, so you go back and you, you grant new trials. But in a capital case, unlike every other case, there is a duty on the prosecution to disclose to the defendant every bit of evidence that's collected. The defendant has a right to know everything. We refer to that as an open file policy. If it's in the prosecution's file, the defense is entitled to it. We struggled in the beginning because I, I entered orders directing the prosecution to turn over everything to the defense team. But the defense team kept coming back saying, Judge, we know there's more information, and here's why we know it. And I'd enter another order, tell them to give it up, you know, turn it over, whatever you have, you know, divulge that to the defendant. But they never did. Uh, I didn't have any proof they had it. All I had was an accusation from a defense lawyer saying, we know there's more. Well, prove to me there's more. They couldn't really prove to me there was more. Um, and you, you enter an order, you expect the prosecution to follow it, but apparently, in this case, obviously they did not. After that hearing, I made a finding that the prosecution's acts were willful, intentional, and designed to gain an unfair advantage. And in my mind, that created double jeopardy. Uh, and I dismissed the case. I, I felt like it's one thing when a prosecution team makes an error, an oversight. They make a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes every day. Um, but it's another thing entirely when a person lies to the court, when they look you in the eye and, says, and say information does not exist, when in fact they know it did exist. And that's what he did. And I felt like they squandered their opportunity to prosecute Daniel Wade Moore. Going back to your decision where you dropped charges, how, I mean, you're an elected judge. How mm -hmm. risky is that to? Who knows? I thought I'd committed political suicide. I really did. I thought it very well might be uh, the end of my career as a judge come next election. But you did it anyway. I did it anyway. It was the right thing to do. It had to be done. I couldn't sleep if I didn't do the right thing. I sleep well. I may not always be right, but I promise you I'm going to do my best to do what's right, what I believe is right and what the law requires of me. After you released Daniel Wade Moore, the Court of Criminal Appeals overturned that. I'm sure they did. And how did you feel about that? I felt like they didn't fully understand what had happened. I just don't think they had a clue. But they, they do their job, I do mine. I take orders well. You didn't think it was fair that Daniel Moore had to go through a second trial? I did not, no. Juries don't make findings that people are innocent. Jury make, juries make findings that a person is either guilty or that the state failed to prove their guilt. So the jury didn't find Daniel Wade Moore innocent. Uh, they found that the state failed to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. So there's still a shadow hanging over Daniel Moore? I wouldn't think so, not in his mind and uh, not in his family's mind. But in the mind of the police and the prosecutor, he's the one who killed Karen Tipton. He can live with that.